Hello YouTubers. <clears throat> um, before I start this video, uh, please, please, please like and subscribe by clicking downstairs if you like this format of videos. It really helps the channel to grow and uh, right now it is quite small, uh, but I would like to see it a lot bigger. Second of all, uh, this video will be a little bit unusual because now I would normally um, move on to the next topic um, but <clears throat> um, and I actually I mean the next video is going to be about timers but somebody pointed out in a private message unfortunately not in a comment that would have been more interesting uh, but in a private message I somebody pointed out that my code in the last example was somewhat um, non-optimal and in all honesty, one of the things I really personally enjoy about embedded programming is that optimization matters a lot. Even small changes can have a massive impact on the code. So let's look at the status of the last message. We have uh, we have the app uh, which does the interrupt. You can change the speed of the blink, but the important part is it runs to this loop where all the work is actually done it will print out a tick every 1000 milliseconds and it will blink the led after uh, each uh, 500 milliseconds until you press a button that is and as you can see and it keeps track of how many times the loop is actually run between each tick it resets the tick uh, every time it is printed. So we can see at the moment we are about um, 3 uh, million 172,000 loops uh, between each tick. But looking at my code, there are a couple of things that can be optimized, which the C optimizer is probably not optimizing by itself. The first one is actually this one. Uh, I have not looked at the compiled um, assembler code, but what I'm doing here is I'm comparing button press with a constant value of one. In reality, the if statement just check if it is zero or non-zero. So the first optimization would actually be to remove this part. If button press is zero it will not be executed if it is anything but zero it will be executed so let's see if that makes any change at all to the number of loops and you can already see it went up a little bit it's not a lot we are, we are talking uh, probably roughly 30 loop counts uh, but 30 loop counts every second it it is an increase in um, in speed and uh, that is interesting far more serious though uh, in this case is what i'm doing up here where i am checking now the now value is updated everything and i subtract last blink and i compare that with a constant value i do that twice and that is actually an enormous <coughs> waste of calculation. And uh, somebody pointed out a more elegant way of doing this. Now, if instead of using a last blink, we set a variable called next blink. And at the f first, we'll set that to 500. And the last tick, we call that next tick. We'll set that to 1000. Now we can make our comparison quite a lot simpler. We can start with this one and say if now is greater or equal than next tick and then we can remove this and we can do exactly the same up here. I want to keep this one just in case I screw something up. Uh, say if now is greater than greater 
greater than or equal next link. So now the only difference we need to make is we need to set the next blink. So next blink should be now plus the blink delay. And down here we will have our next tick equals now plus just the thousand. In reality, this should do exactly the same, but the comparison where we're actually making the decision whether to execute or not, it has become much, much simpler. And we do the calculation inside uh, that block instead, which will be executed much less than the other one. Let's see if this makes any change. So compile and run, and here we have. And you already saw that makes a massive, let's show the device, it is still blinking and it is printing out the ticks. So that had a massive impact just optimizing what is being executed when. Uh, this, These statements, <coughs> each of these ifs are run in every loop, but now the actual calculation is just executed every 500 milliseconds for this one or every thousand milliseconds for this one. Our functionality with the button still works. I can press and it will change and run faster and that, but it just runs much more efficient. So a little way of optimizing my own code. I'm learning every day and that is why this is interesting and fun in the first place. As mentioned in the beginning of the video, please do like and subscribe if you feel these uh, videos have any value whatsoever for you. And that's it. Have a wonderful day.